Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to Access All Areas. There were some statements made this weekend and the running premiers were once again challenged. But Matthew Law and Jimmy Bartell, the Tigers just continue to find a way. They do, Damo, and uh, North's forms validated Jimmy again yesterday. Uh, the respect I've got for North is uh, just growing by the week. Their, their tough top-end talent is, is rising to the challenge. They've got some new young ones coming through. But with Richmond... I think psychologically you can be with them, but it's then going the next step and trying to beat them and not too, too many teams can do that at the moment. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. They put in four quarters and they'll eventually yeah. break you in the end, which yeah. they do. But just tip, uh, touching on the, the Kangaroos, Cunnington, Simpkin and Anderson, 25 clearance mm. between them. And that's yeah. how you've got to go after a side like Richmond, try and win the territory game around clearances. But they certainly had their opportunities yeah. to get the win, especially late and big Bren, big Ben Brown, yeah. who's normally a solid shot for goal. Well, he missed a couple, yeah. didn't he? Uh, that's the first of the, the two he missed in the last quarter. But there were other chances within play where they just didn't get the break that they probably needed. This is exactly the point. You know, a lot of teams will be... It will be a great effort if we can get close to Richmond, but it's then about you know, putting the foot on the throat and then making the most of these chances. This one could... Uh, the first player, I just missed his name there. Uh, Cam, Sam Wright. Sam Wright have had a shot, probably should have. He gives it to McDonald. That falls short. Ben Brown, I've never seen him so stiff and, and tense, and when, tense he when he had that shot. Usually that ball would uh, uh, sail ten rows back. Just struggled to make the distance, yep. so they tightened up late. You talked about the midfield structure of North yesterday. Crucial element to it since he's returned from injury has been Ben Jacobs. Took on the, the game's biggest name and, and did a number on him. Yeah, he's got another scalp. Uh, I think the ability he's got is his athleticism as well to go with these big body midfielders. He puts them away. He doesn't let them breathe. Is this the first time it's been done on Dustin Martin, though? I think to this effect. And the advantage Dusty's always had is go forward. And when he went forward, I think Scott Thompson picked yeah. him up, who... Who's a very hard defender to get away from, Lloydy. I think the only one that got him last year might have been uh, Robert and, uh, Robertson, Nick Robertson from the Brisbane Lions, yeah. who really got into him like this as well. And just on that, I think the strength of Richmond is if you have a deep midfield. That's where I feel for Zach Merritt. Who yeah. else do you tag at Essendon? There's no one to tag. Whereas Trent Cochin does yeah. get lets off the chain. He has 37 disposals, dominates. So... No, that's the strength of the Tigers at the moment. The wins left them with a 7-1 scoreline. Yeah. That one loss coming against the only team they've played to this point of the season from last year's top eight. They go to Perth mm. on Sunday with a, an appetising game against West Coast. Yeah, yeah, this will be an absolute crack. And the great thing that West Coast are doing is players are filling the void. Uh, obviously, mm. a lot of good players out at the moment. Natanui, Shuey, uh, McGovern, who's a star. But... Barras fills the role really well. They're getting great form out of Redden. And, and Jack Darling's taking his game to another level. Damo, we're going to look at the ladder later. But yep. uh, they've gone two games clear, these two sides. It yep. just shows the dominance of their, that they've had in the first eight rounds. Well, the team they're, they're meeting is winning on the road. They lost their first game of the year against the Swans. Haven't lost since. They did so against GWS on the weekend without three, or probably their four mm. key players. McGovern, Shuey and Nick Natanui, yeah. obviously. And they're just getting the job done, aren't they? And Jimmy's right. Best man on the ground on the weekend was Bar Barras. So mm. McGovern out, Barras stepped up. Jack Darley in the form of his life. Jack Redden. Uh, we all thought, uh, what's yeah. he like? Is he good enough? In the best three on the ground in the last two or three weeks. So they're just finding players week after week. Jimmy, I want you to forensically pull <laughs> apart what the Cats have been able to do within season. That has changed dramatically their backline structure. They were probably forced to with Harry Taylor and Lockie Henderson being out, but Gee, they've looked good since they've changed up. Yeah, you, you've touched on there. It's been a personnel change here. Mark Litzars, who takes a great contested mark, has now settled mm. as a key defender. Harry Taylor came back in, but the good thing is they left Taylor there. He leads the transition back, so he works really hard up and back. Tom Stewart is a cult figure now down yeah. at Geelong. But the advantage they have with Stewart and Henry is they've got so much speed and they can play tall and small, so you can be very flexible. Jed Buse in good form, but what they're doing is... They're playing team defence, right. so they're not looking after their own individual patch, and we're seeing them start to peel off and mark the ball, and you can only do that by the pressure around the ball. So they've lifted their rating around the contest as well. I love the confidence of that. Colin Jastings marking, Henry's marking, and obviously Stewart. But a question for you, where does, who does Henderson take out if he's to come back in the next month or so? <laughs> It's a, a, it's, hard, uh, look, it's a Good difficult problem to have. It's a yeah. great problem to have, and you never know what yeah. injuries and, and mm. form are like at that time of the year. Could they fit them all in? One starts on the interchange. We've seen Henderson play forward mm. early in his career, and we know Harry spent a lot of last year forward, so mm. does one of them become that swing man for the Cats? Yep. Soft tissue injury crisis at Adelaide Crows, also at Collingwood. Elliot uh, returned through the VFL, has done a hamstring again of some sorts, and they uh, lost more yesterday mm. again for the second time this year with the soft tissue. Uh, Phillips was unable to complete the game yesterday with uh, other reasons, yeah. but they've been unlucky with injuries. They need to look at it, don't they? And I thought they missed Ben Reid yesterday. Just that player to go and, and create a contest in that forward 50 was too much to ask of Mason Cox.
box. But again, yeah, injuries year after year. Nathan Buckley said they have to address it. Mm. And they're out of the eight at the moment, so there's no room for slip-ups anymore at Collingwood. And Pindleby couldn't get up for that yeah. game either. Uh, an amazing game in Adelaide, the showdown. Showdown 44, 22, all after the 44 yeah. they've had. And that man, Robbie Gray, he's done it so many times before, got them back in it with the five-goal performance in the third quarter. Well, they always both uh, step up and deliver cracking games. I think uh, the town comes alive there in Adelaide. They, they know how important it is. But as you said, Robbie Gray is what happened to the game. Yeah. Five goals in a quarter, extraordinary. And both sides had opportunities to win in the last minute. As uh, it looks through this, this is moment. the last play. We're going to forensically uh, go through this in a moment. But uh, for that man to kick that goal order at that moment, it basically justifies his selection, I reckon, yeah. in, the one, in the one fell swoop. Oh, and you hear the roar of this crowd on this siren. This was like grand final. So look at the players for Port Adelaide. That is like how you celebrate when you've won a grand final. I don't think we understand here in Melbourne just the, oh. the the hatred of the two clubs, the passion that goes. Oh, we see the passion there. He the five zero. Obviously, they'd lost five in a row. He'd been hammered all week. Now it's one nil. Forget about the five. And Bossy going off too. So, yeah. Okay, let's break it down. Yeah, Crucial yeah. play. Obviously, uh, Port kicked mm. the winning goal. Adelaide had a chance to save it. I want you both, please, yeah. to take out uh, take a thrill. Who have you highlighted there? I'm highlighting Tom Lynch on the wing and Eddie Betts. They are forwards. I'm not sure why you stand there on the wing and then charge forward. So where should they be? Well, they should stay forward yeah. or get in defence because uh, their man is the one that actually won the yeah. ball. Jimmy? And, and Jordan Gallucci just loses uh, Stephen Motlop there when the ball gets uh, kicked in. But also, Need's not the biggest bloke. And there was three Crows players there. One of them just has to take his body completely out. He managed to create a contest one on three. But it's a fantastic finish from Stephen mm. Motlop. That sidestep and being able to finish almost running off your right foot was a class yeah. act. OK. The ladder, after eight rounds, mm. often appears as though it's set for the remainder of the year. Is it that the case in 2018? That's the top 13. They're the 13 that are in it. I think we cancel out Fremantle and the Western Bulldogs. Even their percentage tells you a lot about it. I think the Bulldogs have beaten the three bottom sides pretty much the last uh, three weeks or so. Fremantle... They just haven't got a forward, really. Um, so I think it's down to the top 11. Um, Giants being decimated, but have a good run. The Swans are the team I want to talk about. They're next month. Fremantle, Brisbane, Carlton, St Kilda. I think they'll be in the top yeah. four very, very shortly. Tesla on GWS there. Yeah. A couple of crowd issues, I think, with mm. the two uh, newest teams in the AFL. Only 9,200 for their game against Gold Coast. and Sorry, for against the West Coast. Mm. And the Gold Coast game, albeit played at the, the Gabba, mm. only 6,000 there for their game against Melbourne. It, it's serious issues. Mm. And Gold Coast have got to go to China now, as yeah. we know. Uh, Blues and Dons uh, got their first win of the year, the Blues. Uh, did so with some, some nice aggro around the ball. I want to take a look at Jed Lamb's treatment of uh, Brendan Goddard and how his teammates of the Bombers guys failed to come and help him. Well, yeah, well done to Brendan Bolton. I think he, he set three tasks and they all come off, and this was one of them. Jed Lamb on Goddard, what were your thoughts on this? Oh, well, you said the footage here. That is a clear team plan. Nearly yeah. every Carlton player in the area looked big. Harry Mackay comes and gives him a tap on the chest here. It was a clear get after Brendan Goddard day. And Jed Lamb knows if he's going to be an AFL player, this is what he has to do. He just got under the skin of Brendan Goddard every second he could. The Bombers, Damo, responded on Anzac Day and said, that's fine what Brennan Goddard did. Yeah. yeah it's not a, but I reckon Carlton would have watched that and said, you know what, if we can get Brennan Goddard razzed up, going, it yep. affects everyone else. Carlton players have admitted it afterwards. Yeah, so, the moment we've yeah. got post the game is, is that they went in with that plan, Lord. Well, yeah. I think you're right to, to raise it in that context. Is it a cumulative effect of what Brendan Goddard does to his own teammates with the way this played out on the weekend, Lord? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I think so. And obviously he uh, can be a destructive player off halfback. So I think uh, Merritt, again, couldn't handle the tag on Kerno, so uh, yeah, a few issues at Essen. They're just lacking confidence, lacking belief. Even their best players you know, are lacking that at the moment. Yeah. Even the coach, I think John Worsfold, is lacking confidence in himself at the moment. Really? Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, fantastic game. And mm. someone who's not lacking confidence in himself mm. as a coach is Alistair Clarkson. Post-match, they lost the Hawks to the Swans. And Alistair Clarkson, as he can do, put some big picture issues uh, on the table. Last quarter, we go inside 50. Ruffhead takes a mark. They play a free kick for a block. And Sydney block better than any other team in the competition in their back end for Rampy and Grundy to take those marks. You know, one minute later, that ball goes into the top of the goal square. Rampy, Grundy and Roughhead, no block paid. Why? Top of the goal square. I'm not going to pay that free kick. So those, those swings and roundabouts can affect you, the margin of the game sometimes. And, um, and we didn't get them. They're very sophisticated with the way that they defend. Um, at different stages, they're getting away with blue murder too. 
Yeah, he's clearly disappointed in the way uh, they were treated with free kicks. And the Swans are fantastic at defending the body, yep. not the ball. So they, they make really good body contact on the forwards. They push them under the ball here, as we see in the, the vision So this here. is what he's referring to, Jimmy. Take yeah. us through what, what it is that's got him angry here. Roughhead taking the mark, and then off the ball, we'll see a, a separate shot of this. Grunny's given the free because of something Langford's done to him. Yeah, so he sees it in, in reverse. If the Swans were to do that... He, they're not getting free kicks against, but he saw Langford doing what the Swans players do, which is you know, hold a player out. To me, that's a free kick every day of the week and yeah, played the right way. That yes. was too far out. I'm, I'm comfortable with this no decision yeah. one because Grundy was almost in a position to mark here. It was very close, but Rampy was better off. So he, he's hammering the, the interpretations of the game and being stricter on it. I don't see an issue with what the umpires yeah. have done on both those occasions. Pay the free kick in the first instance and not the second. Unless there's some other examples, Damo, I'm with you. I think he's got that wrong and maybe he should wait till the Monday after looking at the vision before yeah. uh, making assessments. Oh, I think we're calling him mm. bluffy. Mm. I'm prepared to on yeah. these moments. Oh. Uh, Isaac Smith also too, because this yes. happens mm. against the Swans yes. here. Yeah, so it happens for both sides, and it's very difficult to umpire because if the umpire's in the middle of the ground, he's got to make that decision whether Isaac Smith was going for the ball. That's probably one back your way there because Gunston ended up kicking the goal and, there. And that should have been a free to Jones, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah spot on. Yeah. Uh, should have been, uh, but they also do it as well, whether yeah. it's a free kick or not. And John Lamar said after the game, uh, well, you know, he didn't complain when they beat us five point or two. <laughs> yeah. So I reckon sometimes coaches can deflect yep. and be frustrated as well. James Sicily fascinates me as much mm. as any player in the competition. I love watching him play. Late in the game, you can see the score, you can see the time. Should he have gone for this contest, guys, with Rowan coming in? Is it a miscommunication with Whitecross? Uh, well, it's not a Monday if we don't talk about James Sicily, is it? <laughs> but look, I, I think he's looked at Whitecross thinking he's going to come and make the contest and he's got into a great front and square position. But I'm and, not sure what he's trying to say uh, here to the umpires, Lloydy, post-game. Uh, ordinary, I think he's... Uh, as you said, his biggest strength, his biggest weakness. He plays on the edge and it's great, but you hate seeing that. They, they lost the game. Yep. A player would have loved to have seen grab him and say, come on, don't yep. speak to the umpires and that. Well, a small, I suppose, positive yeah. out of that was at least he didn't lay hands on yes. the umpire, which a few <laughs> other players did on the weekend. And it came on the back of Jack Hawkins last week. This is Ed Kono from the, from the Essendon-Carlton uh, game. To me, he has to miss a week. Mm. Now, this is... Charlie Kerno. Now, again, you may think this is minor, but just have a look again on replay. A hand does go to him. Again... I know what he's trying to do there, but just don't do it. Stephen May, Gold Coast captain. Even again, you can say he's explaining to the umpire what he felt happened in that marking contest. Don't do it. So, Damo, you think it's black and white. Touch, yep. touch the umpire, you miss a week. Intent has nothing to do yeah. with it. If there's any grey when it comes to touching umpires, we are in trouble as, as a game, I feel. So, as much as there's mitigating circumstances, probably all three of those incidents just there, they all have to miss a week mm. on the back of what they did last week. All right. I agree with you, Damo. And let's finish on a few lighter yeah. notes. Dale, is it Daisy Thomas? He's a cheeky one, yeah, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> Daisy Thomas, as Bruce might say. But uh, what's this? He's got Sean McKernan there. Oh, no, he goes again. It wasn't just an accident. He goes for the second time, which is very funny. He's in great form at the moment. Well done, Daisy Thomas. Look, it's just not. He's got the little bit. We thought could that be an accident? Watch, oh, goes again. No, has another crack. At it. I'm enjoying the next one we're about to show yeah. you. Lockie Keith, if you want to keep your spot, probably doing this is not asking the coach to be your waiter here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just take my water with your boss. Oh, I'll pat it on the back. What the hell is that? Just throws it. Yeah, does he give a bit of spray? Take your own water. He's not happy there, Leon, is he? No, I'm not the drinks man. Lordo, I think uh, Jimmy's funny trumped your phone. Oh, you're all right. right. No, so, I'll yeah. that. Hey, well, uh, Lordo and Jimmy Bartel. That's all we've got time for. Thanks for joining us on Access All Areas. We'll see you again next Monday. Goodbye.